you stream because this weekend I did watch the new movie Night Swim that came out on January 5th and I watched other people's reviews and hey I give respect to everybody who does reviews everybody has their own opinion and I am fine with that I have my own opinion too a lot of people were saying the movie was trash I beg to differ but yet again that is just my opinion I thought the movie was well executed so y'all gotta hear me out here so if y'all are unaware the and I also mentioned spoilers, so I'm going to be talking about the movie in detail, too. So, it's about this family who moves into this house, and um, the father was a past MLB player who got his, like, leg broken or something, and he wants to recover, so um, he gets that pool, like, he chooses the house because it has a pool, and he's hoping he can do, like, um, water therapy with the pool to heal his leg, and <clears throat> technically he made a wish, and the... Pool is magic in the sense where somebody makes a wish, and then for the wish to be granted, somebody has to die to grant that wish. So that's basically how it happens, and sadly, the unlucky person is the son. I think it was a great story. A lot of people were hating on it, because they didn't just stick with a haunted pool. They went on with a whole other story, which I actually like that in a movie. I like it, so that way it's all invested, but like... I don't want it just to be only about the pool, because that would get boring. I want there to be other stuff going on, and they did that. They mentioned all this stuff about baseball and stuff. A lot of people didn't like that, but I thought it was really good. So, yeah, um, I will say the only flaw I see with it is the characters do some pretty dumb choices. And by dumb, like, <sighs> there's this one scene with the son where he gets... Um, he wants to go swimming in the pool, but his parents say he can't without his dad, and his dad's busy, so his dad lets him go by himself and stuff. And they just build it up, like, you know there's gonna be a jump scare. And then the stupidest part of that scene, though, is the boy hears a girl's voice in the drain, and just think, if you were in that situation, you heard a little girl's voice in your drain calling for help, A, you go up to the drain, you check it out, or B, you get the hell out of the pool. Guess which one the boy chose? Do you say B? If so, you're wrong, because A, he went up to the drain and tried talking to the little girl. And then, of course, nothing was in there. But you know what he did find in there? His toy. And what he did was he reached his uh, he reached his hand into the drain to grab his toy. And it's like, if you heard voices coming in the drain and you don't see anything in there, but you see your toy, that's just dumb. You don't reach your hand in first place, because it's like, oh my gosh, bro. And then he grabs his toy, he pulls it out, and there's hair attached to it, and he's so confused, and his toy's kind of stuck because it's got hair attached to it, and then he's trying to pull on it, and then a freaking hand comes out of the drain and tries to pull him in, like, but that could have been easily fixed if you didn't just do, or it could have easily been fixed if you didn't go to the drain, but he did go to the drain, and it just screwed that whole thing up for him, so... Other than that scene, which had me, like, why is he being so stupid, this movie was really good and just well executed, so, yeah, they had some solid jump scares, they had a good job building up to the jump scares, too, the opening scene was pretty good, too, um, if you know Blumhouse, several of their movies they've done in a few, they open up their scenes with, like, an opening death, they did in Five Nights at Freddy's, they do do it in Night Swim. The opening death scene does leave you on edge, and it was a pretty creative opening scene, but yet again, the person was stupid, and that caused them to die, but... Minus all the stupidity, I I'll tell you, it was fine. Um, it was a little scary, um... Definitely scarier than Five Nights at Freddy's, so if you're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan and you like Blumhouse because they made that movie, um, I'd say get into horror a little bit more before you watch this movie because they are really strong in the jump scares. You think Five Nights at Freddy's had a bunch of jump scares? Watch this. This one was loaded with them. And some people could complain on that and say that too much jump scares ruin the movie. I, I beg to differ. I say the more jump scares, the better, because then... Um, the, you're getting something out of it, instead of just being bored the whole time, you're on your edge, you're on the edge of your seat the most in the movie, so, I, I think it's well executed, so many people had complaints, and it's just like, why, um, don't go see the movie then, if you're gonna complain like a baby, it's just like, I, I thought it was a good movie, personally, I, I really like the story, um, 
But yeah, um, I would recommend if you're into the horror genre like I am. I might also start doing more reviews too, but there's more to talk about. Um, there was a lot of cliche scenes too, like um, just a bunch of weird buildups that, like, common horror trope, like. You hear something, you go check it out, which you would never do in real life. If you heard a girl's voice in a drain, you would not go to that drain and start trying to look inside and reach your hand. And that just makes no sense. And the crazy thing is, in that movie, they told the kid he had to go with his father. The actor who played that kid, I understand he was playing a younger character and he looked younger. But that actor was freaking 15 years old. And I'm like, I think a 15-year-old could be capable to go to a pool by himself. So just... Simple stuff like that is kind of, like, the reason why I got a little annoyed. But, yeah. Uh, let me see. They do have some trailers online. The trailers do justice. If you get too scared in the trailers, then you're probably going to get too scared to watch the movie. That's basically what I'm going to tell you. Um, if you find the trailers too scary, you're going to definitely find the movie too scary, and I would not watch it then, because... I mean... <sighs> It's just really dumb scenes. The Marco Polo scene, too, is kind of dumb. That was the first ever trailer promotion thing for the movie. And I, I thought it was scary, yes. Um, but the thing is, now that I watched the movie and I watched other people's reviews, I didn't think of it until I watched somebody's review. And the thing is, they were so right. Like, they're playing Marco Polo, right? And if nobody's saying, um, you're saying Marco, and you're not hearing Polo back for a... Uh, long period of time, you would open your freaking eyes, because, like, obviously something's going on, and she just did not open her eyes, she was just like, Marco, you're supposed to say something, Marco, and then she sees the shadow in the water, she goes up to it, thinking it's her boyfriend, she walks right up to it, and is about to touch it, sink, goes in the water, you know what I would do in that situation, get the hell out of the pool, but instead, she's just like, okay, this is over, and she goes underwater to look for him, it's like, why go underwater, and of course, she gets pulled under afterwards, it's just like, they did so much dumb choices, but, <sighs> yeah, a lot of the reviews online are saying how it's bad, but I would never really say it's bad, because it's really not bad, um, I'm talking about a lot of hate, but I really love the cinematography. The cinematography was amazing. People said the acting was cheesy. Yes, it was. But also, I think it was, well, put together at the same time. Um, they had a lot of good scenes, personally. I feel like they the they did a lot of underwater scenes, which I feel like pulled off really good. And just, just a few amazing scenes that I really did enjoy from this movie. Um, but, yeah, so... We're going to get more into the spoilers now, where I'm going to actually break down the movie for you. So, from what I remember, that is, I might not get everything that you all thought of when you saw it, if you saw it, but here's what I picked up from the movie. So, this family, a mother, a father, and their two children, a son and a daughter, moved to this house. Um, the father was an ex-MLB um, player, but he had to quit because he... Um, broke his leg in an incident, and now he has to carry a cane with him everywhere. Um, so they moved to this house that has a pool so the father can have water therapy to help heal his leg faster, and so he can start playing baseball again. So they move in, it's all A-OK -okay at first, and they start swimming. The father's leg starts to heal too, which they always find that good. And then, that's when things start happening. The family starts seeing things. Actually, first person who saw it was the mother. Um, she was swimming in the pool, going back and forth. And then she sees her husband standing at the edge of the pool. And then when she looks up, he's gone. And that was not actually her husband. That was a deceiving thing. But it was a cool jump scare. It was You knew it was happening, too, because it was the b camera back and forth motion. You knew at one of those points it was going to stop, jump scare, keep going. It's just like... You can usually tell when jump scares are in movies because they're so obviously put in, but, like, this movie did a good job hiding them. Like, you knew there was going to be a jump scare, but you didn't know when it was going to happen. I feel like they did a good job portraying that, but, um, so, yeah, she sees her husband, but it's not her husband, so she's a little creeped out, right? I would be creeped out, too, if I saw someone that wasn't there and it was just, like, staring at me. Um, so, 
she gets out of the pool, she goes in, um, her husband's on the bed sleeping, she goes up to him and says, were you in the, were you by the pool? And guess what? The creepiest thing is, he said no, and he asked, is everything alright? She said yes. Nothing there is alright, trust me. If you see something that's not there at the pool, especially your husband who's sleeping, why say everything is alright? And it's just, like, so annoying. Um, so, that happens, and, um... The kids go to school the next day, I'm pretty sure, if I'm accurate, and it's been since last weekend since I watched the movie, I'm going based on my memory. Um, the daughter meets this boy who's a part of the swim team, he's recruiting people to join the swim team, and he recruits her, and she has a little thing for him, it's like a whittle whittle quash. So yeah, she has a crush on him, and then, um, um, later that not or eh, I gotta remember the scenes it's so hard to remember because it's been a little while um so they go back and I'm gonna just fast forward to the part I do remember next so the boy um I forgot to mention the cat dies um that's sad for y'all but I I forgot what part that ended up in but yes the cat does die it, in the movie, it's sad. Um, they don't show. It's an off-screen kill, thankfully. You don't see the monster killing the cat or drowning the cat. It was just like the cat is on the diving board, the pool lights start to flicker, and then it goes black, signifying... The, and you don't see the cat for the rest of the movie. The only signification that the cat is missing or dead is because next day the family finds its collar in the water. It's in the pool, and the cat is missing. So you can just assume that the cat is dead from those if you put the clues together, which mm -hmm. I did personally. So yeah, the cat dies. Um, the um, sad, especially the son, because that was the son's cat. And then I'll just fast forward a little bit too. So then the son goes swimming in the pool, um, and um. This is the scene I was talking about earlier with the stupidity, but it was also a really good jump scare, too. So, the boy is swimming. Um, well, first, he asked his mom to go to the pool. The mom said, no, you need to ask your father, signifying he's a little kid, even though the actor is 15 years old. But she's like, no, you need to um, ask your father to go with you. He goes to the garage where his father is. He asks his father. The father said, no, nah, go by yourself. I'll be out there in a little bit. And... What the family does is they have this jar of quarters, and what they do is they throw quarters in the pool and have the kids go under and grab them. Um, he brought the um, he brought the jar out of quarters for when his dad came, so his dad could throw some quarters in for him. And um, he's swimming by himself, right? And he goes underwater, and guess what? One singular quarter floats to the bottom of the pool, right? One singular quarter floats to the bottom, and... That's just sketchy as it is, so then he swims to the top of the water, and he's like, Dad, hey, where are you? And guess what? Nobody's up there. So then he goes back under the water, and another coin, another freaking quarter falls under, and then he picks it up, and then another, and it just, what's good, Jamie? And then a whole trail of quarters start going, he keeps picking them up, and dumb thing is, wouldn't you be suspicious, though? Like, if you, if a freaking quarter fell in the water, why why wouldn't, and if a quarter fell in the water and you went to the top, nobody was there. I'm telling you, nobody was there. Would you be sketched out? Like, would you get out of the pool and leave if nobody was there? I personally would, and he didn't, so he kept following the trail of quarters. Like, why? And, um, it eventually led him to underneath the diving board, and he was underneath the diving board. He heard somebody walk onto the diving board, and, um, he thinks it's somebody, like, probably his dad or something, because his dad said he'd be out soon. So, he looks up over the diving board. Guess what? Nothing's there. And I'm telling you, this is how they build up the jump scares, make you think it's gonna happen at any moment. And then, he's, like, at this point, sketched out, so he's about to leave the pool, and then he hears this little girl's voice inside the drain of the pool saying, help me, I'm lost, I can't find my mom. And that is just a signification right there to get the hell out of the pool. I'm one of Cartoon's friends here, and it's nice to see you, Lama, nice to see you. Um, but yeah, so, it's, that's just a signification to get the hell out of the pool, because something freaky is up. So, listen here, thing that gets me is he goes up to the drain, he walks right up to it, like, whoop-de-doo, I'm gonna walk to my death pretty much 
he doesn't end up dying, okay? I'm, I'm spoiling that, too. He doesn't end up dying, but it's like, he might as well die. That was a death wish. So, he goes up to the drain, right? Here's the girl's voice. And she's asking for her mom and to get help and get out. And the boy goes up there, and he looks inside the drain. He finds his toy. And um, he ends up grabbing his toy for some reason. And he grabs it. There's hair stuck to it. I This is the scene I told you earlier, so if you saw that, I'm repeating it. I'm sorry. But there's hair stuck to the toy. And... Um, he can't get it out because of the hair, and he's pulling on it and pulling on it, and then a hand comes out of the drain and grabs his arm and tries to pull him in, but he yanks himself out, and then he runs inside, and it's like, why couldn't you do that sooner? Like, oh my gosh, it drives me crazy, and then, um, later, the mom and the dad, I'm pretty sure, go out, so the sister has to babysit her brother, and she tells the brother she's having a guest over, aka her boyfriend she met at school, and... Um, they're gonna go over and do the Marco Polo scene, like, you see in the trailer. That pretty much builds up to what it does in the trailer, so, um, they're playing Marco Polo, the brother is in the inside, um, playing with his toys, the sister is out in the pool with her boyfriend playing Marco Polo, um, so, builds up the same way, the boyfriend leaves the pool, and she doesn't hear him, so, she just keeps going Marco, and there's no response, and she's like, you're supposed to say Polo, but he doesn't say Polo, and she's just looking around. And the signification, you know when the monster's gonna come, the pool lights flicker. That's how you know there's gonna be a jump scare and the monster's gonna appear. The lights start to flicker. And her eyes are closed, so she doesn't even notice that. So she's saying, Marco! Marco! And then all of a sudden she just hears this mysterious, like, whisperish kind of voice saying, Polo! Just this weird, deep, kind of deep, mystery mysterious voice. What are you talking about right now? The movie Night Swim. And hold up. I'm going to be right back. I got to do something. Alright, I'm back. I just gotta do something. Um, so, yeah, then she hears the deep voice, and she sees the shadow in the water, and she thinks it's her boyfriend, so she goes up to the shadow, thinking it's her boyfriend, and she's like, I see you! Like, she's squinting. She doesn't have her complete eyes closed, which is kind of cheating like, in the logic I see of that. You. Like, I, hear my, I hear my voice. Crap. Um, but yeah, so... She thinks it's her boyfriend, because she doesn't see fully, but she's like, I, I think I see you. I just gotta turn down my PC volume. So then she goes up, starts swimming up to him, and she reaches out to touch him. Right when she's about to touch him, goes underneath the water, and then from then on, she's like, okay, that's it. And she jumps completely under the water and swims around looking for him. And then, what's, what is Night Swim? It's a horror movie that came out on January 5th. Um... Hold up, let me show you. Um, yeah, it's a horror movie that came out January 5th. I'm doing a review on it right now. With spoilers, so if you're planning on seeing the movie, this is not the stream for you, because I'm doing spoilers as well. But, yeah, Night Swim. Um, I'll show you one of the pictures. It's a horror movie that came out January 5th. I'm doing my review on it. Because I'm going to start doing more horror movie reviews, possibly, because I find those fun. But yeah, this is the thing for Night Swim. Um, so, as I was talking about earlier, so, the um, girl um, is about to leave the pool, and her leg gets grabbed and gets pulled under, and she just, like, is freaking out, and she eventually fights her way to get... Horror movies are scary. Yes, indeed they are. I'm a horror fanatic myself. I got a whole collection. Oh, hold up. Hold up. I have a whole shelf dedicated to horror. All of these on the shelf are horror films. My video games are up there, but we don't count those. Everything else is horror. I am a major horror connoisseur, and I collect so many horror-related stuff. And I might start doing more reviews, because I find reviews fun, too. Okay. We're going to continue, though. Um, so, 
as I was saying, she gets pulled under. She eventually fights her way up. Or she doesn't fight her way up. Her boyfriend picks her up. And he's like, why are you underwater so long? And she's like, why did you leave the pool? He's like, no, I, I... Well, he did leave the pool, but he was like, hey, I was still playing and stuff. So that was all, like, I don't know. I wouldn't say in her head because she did experience that. But, like, he was so confused because she was just underwater to him. And he pulled her up. And she was like, okay, that's enough. And her parents get home, so she goes um, inside, but she snuck her boyfriend over, so her boyfriend leaves, and the next day, I mi I feel like I'm missing a bunch of crucial parts, there is a scene with the bait at a baseball game for the son and the father, since he was a past MLB player, he hits a ball, and it's, it's beyond home run, it breaks the whole baseball and stuff, that scene, but I'm not going to go into that scene, because it doesn't really do with the horror, but, um, and then he, um, or, oh, then there's a pool party, yes, and at the pool party, everybody's having fun, they're playing in the pool and stuff, like, you would at a pool party, it's just all fun and games and stuff, and, um, the, one of the kids who is part of the ML, or not MLB, one of the kids who is a part of the mini league baseball team or something asks for the father's autograph and um with the ball he broke because he found it while searching for it and he got it autographed by him and um and then the father said to the kid um you want to do chicken fight beat this person oh yeah i actually did see the trailer um only for nights one movie you're talking about right now yeah, so, then they play chicken fight against this other, um, man and child. If you don't know what chicken fight is, it's when somebody's in the water and they have somebody over their shoulder and the people on the shoulder start pushing each other, trying to knock each other over. And then, the f father and the, um, kid, um, get win, and then all of a sudden, the father character... He starts backing up into the deep end, with the kid still strapped to his shoulders, and he's starting to get fully submerged under the water. The kid's calling for help, and the man, the dad, but not his dad, um, this is all confusing, but yeah, um, they go to the deep end, and he's holding him really tight, and the kid's trying to let go, but he's got him by, like, a death grip, and the kid is starting to drown and stuff, and then you see this, like, black ooze come out of the drain and into the father's nose, and that's how you know he's gotten possessed. And the kid almost dies and stuff. And then, etc, etc. The um, father is possessed with black goop. And then the mother tries to figure out what's going on. So she goes to the people who owned the house before and asks them about the pool curse. And the mother of the daughter in the opening scene tries to deny it. But then she te eventually tells them that there's a curse that... Somebody will get their wish come true, but then somebody will have to die to pay the price. And for that, the father got the wish, and the son has to die. So then, now the son is um, at home, and he starts hearing his cat meowing. So he goes over to the diving board, because apparently the cat is now on a floaty. And he goes over on the diving board, and he tries to get his cat. Um, and then... Emphasis, I said the cat's dead, it's not a real cat, it's just a decoy to get him to the water. So then he tries to reach over for the cat on the diving board, not trying to get into the water. And, um, it ends by, um, him practically pulling in the floaty. Um, they also have a huge tarp for the water, too. That's what involves this. And then he eventually grabs the floaty, but then he s the cat's gone, and he sees the monster, and he gets scared, and he falls into the water, and once mm -hmm. he falls into the water, um, the tarp closes up, and that means he's stuck underneath the water to drown. And then the mother realizes what's happening, and she goes back to save her son, so she jumps into the water... Um, with a hose to get her air and stuff to get back up and everything to save her um, son. The father is possessed, and the daughter is trying to defend herself against the possessed father. Yo, what's good cartoons? So there's several things going on. The mom's saving the son, and the father is possessed fighting the daughter. So 
everything's going on in that scene, two things, so, we'll just say towards the end, the, um, daughter beats the, like, the daughter beats the dad shitless with a baseball bat, and then the dad pukes up black goo, and, um, gets the thing released from him, and stuff, but then the thing is, the curse isn't fulfilled, so then, the son starts getting possessed with the black goo. What's good today? Nothing much. I'm just chilling. Or, what's good today? A lot, I guess. Um, I'm just reviewing the movie Night Swim. Doing a little review. But, yeah, so. Um. Then, what was I gonna say? Mm, Alright, so. Then, the character, the dad, um, vomits up, like, a bunch of goo. And... Oh, what was I gonna say? I'm kind of forgetting. Um, and then, yeah, the p curse goes over to the sun. And then the only way the curse can be fixed is by somebody sacrificing their life to die. And the father, this is kind of heartwarming. A lot of people thought it was cliche and bad, but the father sacrifices his life by um, going into the water himself and killing himself to save his son's life. So... Then, now, the son, the daughter, and the mother are left, and what they do to solve the problem, they don't move out, because they don't want the curse to go into anybody else, and they fill up the pool, so. There you go, that's your quick run-through of the movie. It was a really solid movie, personally. I thought it was great. Great. But, yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, yet again, if you're not into the whole horror spiel, don't watch it, um... If you are, watch it. And if anything, if you don't want to see it in theaters, wait till it comes out on streaming. I wanted to see it in theaters personally, and I did see it in theaters. Happy about that, but if the theater is not your thing, wait till it comes on a streaming service. Chances are it will, and when it does, go watch it. So, that's pretty much what I have to say. Um... Uh, we're going to be covering some more movies this year. I'm planning on doing a whole movie review thing. I might start doing movie review streams because I find them fun, personally. Um, movies that I'm going to be reviewing in the future, it's all horror, too. Um, so, if you're a fan of horror, this is the channel for you. We're going to be covering the movies of the year. I'm going to tell you all the ones that I'm covering, personally. We are covering Imaginary, a uh, Blumhouse film right there. We're covering Imaginary, we're covering Beetlejuice 2, not all of them are horror. I'm gonna probably cover Deadpool 3. We are going to cover... I gotta think of the movies. We're gonna cover Nosferatu, because I'm gonna definitely watch that, because I love Nosferatu! I love Nosferatu! Um, we're gonna cover Terrifier 3. Um, let me see what other horror films, see if I'm missing some. But, let's see, um, I can cover Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 when that comes out, if y'all want to see that. Um, uh, let's think, what else is coming out? If y'all really want, I can also cover the new Godzilla and King Kong movie coming out. I'm not a big fan of the Godzilla and King Kong stuff, but I'll gladly do it if y'all really... Like King Kong and Godzilla, I'll watch it for a review. Um, I don't care to watch Lisa Frankenstein when it first comes out. I will watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey too, because that's intriguing to me. Oh, Mickey's Mouse Trap! That's supposed to be like a fan horror film of Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie. I made you on Boomerang BC. We're friends and fan of you. Nice. Um, but yeah, Mickey's Mousetrap, which is like a fan horror film of Steamboat Willie. Imaginary, yeah, I'm gonna definitely review that. That one seems very intriguing to me. First Omen, I don't know. I haven't seen any of the other Omen films. I don't know if I really care. Radio Silence Monster Thriller. Alright. Horoscope. Alright, yeah, I that one seems interesting. People die based off of what their zodiac sign is. That's really intriguing. I might watch that and tell you about it. Doesn't seem scary, it just seems more like cool. The Watchers. Um, actually the producer of that is Jordan Peele's daughter. Jordan Peele made stuff like um Us, Nope, stuff like that. 
Quiet Place Day 1. Yes, they're making a new Quiet Place movie. Um, Trap. Speak No Evil. Um, Alien Rumbl Rumbulus. Beetlejuice 2, which I'm definitely reviewing. I love Beetlejuice. Can't go wrong with Beetlejuice, bro. Oh, yeah, they're making a second Smile movie on my birthday, actually. October 18th. It's gonna be coming out on my birthday. Make sure to say happy birthday to me on my birthday, October 18th. That's your boy Llama Vlog's birthday. Terrifier 3, I'm gonna review that. Nosferatu. Indeed, I'm gonna review that as well. Bill Skarsgård's gonna be in it, and you love Bill Skarsgård. If you don't, Stop lying. A Drift, have no clue what that is. Arcadian, no clue what that is. Big Head, no clue what that is. The Crow reboot, haven't seen the first Crow, but hey, I'm always down to try something new. Dust Bunny, never heard of it. Faces of Death, never heard of it. Um, wait, hold up. All right. Um, Her Heretic, never heard of it. Immaculate, never heard of it. Long list. Maxine. I do want to watch Maxine. I'm gotta watch the other two in the trilogy, Pearl and X. Once I see Pearl and X, I'm gonna watch Maxine and think of see what I think of that. Yes, cartoons. I've seen the 2018 of Boomerang and Llama Vlogs in in it. It was amazing and the one you, that you uploaded with him. It was him reacting to your 2015 of Boomerang. It's amazing. Yeah, was, yeah. shout out to you, Cartoons, bro. Never Let Go, never heard of it. The One, never heard of it. Return to Silent Hill. Oh, yeah, they're making another Silent Hill. I might watch that. I gotta watch the first one. Salem's Lot. Yeah, they're remaking Salem's Lot, that um Stephen King movie and story. I haven't seen the original. I got that. Shelby Oaks, don't know. Strangers Trilogy. Threads, an insidious tale. They're making a new insidious movie? Weapons and Witchboard. Isn't the Iron Lung coming out this year? If not, 2025 is a movie that um, Markiplier is making. Let me check that out. Markiplier is making his own horror movie, and I give mad props to him for that. Um, I think that's cool. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch that when it comes out. It's based off of an indie horror game. Um, I'm happy making good content. I love making good content. Yes, indeed. But yeah, I'm definitely going to... Get to watch Iron Lung when it comes out, since especially Markiplier is making it. It's crazy. Um, 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 all right, looks like Iron Lung will be rated R2. Um, Iron Lung release date. Let's see. Um, let's see. When will it get to released? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to read the premise. So what's this Night Swim thing you were talking about? It's a horror movie that came out on January 5th. Make sure to watch it if you like horror. It's really good. Now I'm just checking out what this Iron Lung is that that YouTuber Markiplier is creating. I'm going to read the premise. Set in a post-apocalyptic uh, post future where an event known as the Quiet Rapture caused all known stars and habitable planets in the universe to disappear. A convict is sent to search an ocean of blood discovered on a desolate moon using a poorly constructed midget submarine named the Iron Lung. There's your description. Sounds intriguing. I'm going to watch it. This is say when it's going to come out. Um, Iron Lung is right
development. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to read all this spiel. Oh, a horror movie? Interesting. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Very, very interesting. Night Swim is... Um, let me pull up the image again that I was using as a reference. There you go. This is the movie. It's really good. If you're into the horror genre, it's really fun. And I think you'd like it. If you like horror. If you don't like horror, you'll hate it. Um, well, I wouldn't say hate, but... Some people have really strong opinions on horror as a sh as a genre. I love it. Some people hate it. And I get it. People can like and hate different things. My favorite horror movie is Scream. I mean, that one's iconic. Everybody knows and has watched Scream, so... Makes sense. Scream's an iconic one. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's not much more to talk about. We covered Night Swim. Um, my next review is going to be Imaginary when it comes out on March 8th. Set your calendars. March 8th. Probably not exactly March 8th. That's when Night Swim, that's when Imaginary comes out. I will probably do it a few days later. So in March, you'll see my review for Imaginary. I hope you have a good day, good night, evening, anything. I don't know. See so you, Ben, your boy, Llama Vlogs, and I'm signing out. Bye, guys. See ya! Ah! Bye, guys.